All right, this is One Last Midnight, and welcome to another episode of Valheim. I'm going to take you through the beginning era, which is, uh, I call it the Stone Era, and I really think it is the Stone Era, because this is right before you get up to uh, your first kind of metal. So this is for new players just starting out, wondering how to get started into the game. It's rather pretty simple, but there's some tips in here that will really help you out. First off, really basic stuff. This is a stick to branch. You can pick it up. It'll give you wood. And when you open up wood or when you get wood for the first time, you get some recipes. This is a stone. This is what a stone looks like. They're a little hard to see. When you pick it up, you're going to get some more recipes. The first really helpful tip is, look, don't stay here. Go and try to find water. But along the way, you're going to be looking for stone you're going to be looking for sticks and also you'll come across berries and mushrooms. So make sure to pick those up because those are food and you will need them. If you can, try to avoid everybody at this point in time because you're puny and you suck. Now, finding water is important for a couple different reasons. One, you seem to find an abundance of rocks near water. You also find, you know, a decent amount of sticks near water. They're easier to see, to be honest with you. And the imp other important thing is you come across flint. Now, flint's important to make the next level axe. Let's not worry too much about that, but let's continue to keep collecting stone and flint and berries and mushrooms uh, along the way until you can find a flat enough area to start building. Now, if you happen to come across a Grayling, uh, just fight him barehanded. The, the most important thing about fighting is that you have enough stamina. So watch your stamina bar. Make sure that you have enough stamina before you get into a battle. Uh, just take your shots on him, run away, and uh, rinse and repeat, and then eventually you'll wind up killing him off. He drops some stuff. You can pick that up, and you will get resin, which will allow you to unlock a torch. If you have any food, make sure you eat that right away. That'll regain you health, and it will also uh, increase your stamina. As soon as you have enough sticks, craft yourself a club. This will help better defend yourself against the monsters in this area and get yourself actually some food, but we'll worry about that in a minute. And this is what I'm looking for. It's a nice little flat area close to the woods. Uh, this looks like a pretty decent area where I can build my base. It's also close to the water. That's important for later game because you're going to want to make a boat and you're going to want to be able to sail. So be relatively close to the water in an open area. And this is a great starting location. By now, you should have, have enough sticks and enough stones to be able to self craft yourself a stone axe. So go ahead and do that. And you also want to make a hammer. Once you get the hammer, you can now create a bunch of new things. You can make your beginning building base pieces and also build the workbench which allows you to kind of claim a little bit of a work area in which you could start building. Equip your axe and start chopping down trees. You can even chop down these little ones because you're going to need a lot of wood. When you start attacking trees and breaking wildlife related stuff, rocks or trees, the graylings will start coming out. They're, they're kind of like the Lorax of the forest. Like I said, be sure you have that club handy because they're a lot easier to kill with the club. Be careful when you're chopping down trees because you don't know what direction the tree will fall. It's best to look straight up into the air to see what direction the tree starts falling. If it lands on you, it will kill you. Break the logs into smaller pieces and then also continue to break it until you get a bunch of wood. It's time to put down a workbench. So equip your hammer and find a location to put down the workbench. Once you put down the workbench, you get more recipes, that, which are uh, a lot of base building pieces that you need to build your first base. In order to repair any of your gear, your workbench needs to be covered. So the first thing that you want to focus on is covering up your workbench. That's pretty simple. 
just put down yourself a couple walls. The pieces snap to each other, so it's relatively simple to get yourself down a little walled-in area. Next, grab yourself a wood wall 26 degrees. This will give you a little angled piece to allow you to be able to put down a roof. And grab yourself the 26 degree thatched roof and attach it to those little angle pieces. You will now have a workbench that's covered and the important thing about the workbench that's covered is the repair item and you can now repair your items for free. The next thing you're gonna want is a bed. I find it easy just to kind of mirror this backside. You already have half a building anyways. Just snap two more walls onto it. Put that angled piece going the other direction. Put down some more thatch roof. Make yourself a cozy little bed. And put down a fireplace close by. Now you can claim the bed and you set your spawn point and you can actually sleep and rest until next morning. Now you're completely protected. You don't have to worry about uh, dying anymore and starting back at the starting location. This is where you're gonna start, which is your bed. And now we can leisurely take our time and start building up your base. The next step from here is to create yourself a hoe. The hoe is a great tool. It'll allow you to raise and lower the ground, which makes it nice and easy to be able to put down your base pieces. So we made a temporary bed and a temporary base. And now you wanna make something a little bit more permanent. You wanna use the hoe to flatten the ground. Now you don't have to build yourself a big house to start off with. You can see that I've got, you know, a bunch of stones that I can't destroy inside of a location of where I would build a house. Uh, that's okay, don't worry about it. You know, just find yourself a little area that you can start building yourself uh, a mini little like four by four or three by four house uh, to get started on. Houses are a little bit bigger of a conversation. The little lean to that we made for the bed and for the workbench are perfect enough to get you started and actually help you progress during the game. You can just continue to make little lean to's uh, at this point and not have to worry about anything else because the lean to is perfectly acceptable. It will protect you enough uh, for your needs. Next thing you want to focus on is hunting. Hunting's important because right now the only armor that we have on is this little armor tunic. And we're going to need more. Uh, the boars might mess you up in the beginning of the game. They are a little bit quick. They take some timing uh, to be able to kill them. And of course, once we get new armor, uh, it'll be a lot easier to kill them off. The other important thing that boars give you is meat. So once you have some meat, go ahead and craft yourself a little cooking rack. And go ahead and place your first little bit of meat on there. Now the meat will sizzle when you first put it on. It'll also sizzle when it's done. I highly recommend not to walk away from your meat when you first start this game because you can quickly burn the food and turn it into charcoal. Once you hear that sizzle, take the meat off and put new meat on. Eating cooked meat will give you more health and more stamina. You can see in the lower left-hand corner, I've got my little food bar. I've got a berry that I've eaten and a piece of meat. And you have a bar that indicates how much health and stamina you can gain. Eating is in very important. You have to constantly eat in this game. You don't die off. You just get limited stamina and limited health if you have no food. When you kill off the boars, you got leather scrap. Leather scrap is great because you can build yourself some rag pants. Currently, right now, the only thing we have on is a rag tunic. So go and hunt some more boars until you can get rag pants. I personally like the club as a beginning weapon. That way, I don't have to worry about crafting anything else. I just have my club and it's fine. But there are other weapons that you can use and you might be happy with using. Just go ahead and try them out and see which one works the best for you. When you have enough leather scraps, be sure to scrap the rag pants. Every little piece of armor that you wear makes you stronger. So currently right now we have one armor. When we put on the rag pants, we will have two. Yes, I know you're laughing, two armor, ha ha ha, but two armor is better than no armor. The next thing you should focus on making is the flint knife. 
So the flint knife's pretty important because we're going to need to be able to sneak up on deer to kill them off. You can make yourself a crude bow and then turn around and make yourself some arrows. Uh, you're definitely going to want to make a bow and arrow, but I think at this beginning part of the game, the best way to hunt deer is just to sneak with a knife. Now, I know I have deer in this area. This is going to take a little bit getting used to, but you hold down control to get into sneak mode and you start sneaking close to the deer. Now, you need to be right behind the deer in order to be able to pull off this attack. And you might not get an instant kill. Try not to let the deer look at you. Otherwise, they're going to notify the other deer and it's going to mess up your hunt. But once one has your back, it's back turned to you. You can attack it. Hopefully you get an insta kill. And you wind up getting a deer hide. Now, hopefully when you attacked it, it didn't spook off other deer. So you might be able to do another kill. And this one happened to be a star deer, so I'll get a little more out of it. If the deer do happen to run away, just kind of hang out in this area. They have a tendency to come back. But there she is. She came back. One of the great things about this game is food does not spoil. So you could just stick it into your chest and not never have to worry about it going bad on you. Necks are a great source of food. So the other reason to get close to the water, I mean, not only to build and to be able to get your boat ready, but it also provides a nice source of neck meat. When you can, you should upgrade your workbench. Now, there's two things you can upgrade it with at the beginning of the game, which is the chopping block and the tanning rack, and they both have specific requirements. The chopping block is a lot easier to make. It needs to be relatively close to the workbench when you place it, and it will upgrade your workbench, allowing you to get new recipes and increase your level of your workbench. So you can see that we got uh, leather tunic and leather pants. This is your next set of armor. We also got the leather helmet. And you know, in this game, the better armor that you have, uh, the less squishy you are. So, you know, at the next phase of this game is really just to get your armor up. Uh, it's gonna be your choice, whether you want a shield, whether you want yourself a bow or a spear or anything along those lines. But continue to keep working, uh, killing off deer and killing off animals to be able to afford to get the tanning rack. So the tanning rack is going to require 15 flint. It's also going to require 20 leather scraps. Uh, the 20 leather scraps just going to take a little while to kill off some things. And then also work your way to getting yourself the leather gear. Once you get yourself the leather gear, uh, everything is going to be a lot easier to kill. Of course, as you saw as I was running around, and maybe you didn't because it got cut out of the video, but as you do things, all of your skills upgrade. So if you run, you're going to get running skill. If you work on clubs, you're going to get clubs, unarmed, so on and so forth. It's pretty self-explanatory, cutting down wood and knife. All of these will uh, give you more damage. So as you use your club, as you use your knife, uh, you're going to increase your level and you're going to be able to provide more damage with that weapon. So make sure you pick your weapon to use pretty early in the game and make it your primary weapon because once you do, then uh, you'll level a lot faster in it. You can also spread out your items, use different items uh, quite often here and there, and then that way you'll have a variety of items that you're useful in. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, building up your level in this game is relatively easy, so it's something that you shouldn't have to focus too, too hard on. It will get tricky when you get into much higher levels because they take longer to level up. All right, once you have what you need, go ahead and place the tanning rack down. And now your workbench is at level three and you're pretty set. Now you could skip getting the tanning rack until you have your house built. It's not something that you absolutely need to have, but it's nice to be able to upgrade your workbench. And the reason to upgrade your workbench is because you wanna be able to upgrade your gear. 
You know, the more that you upgrade the gear, the more damage it does, the more armor it gives, the better it is overall in durability, doesn't break as fast. So it's always good to upgrade your stuff. But before you start upgrading your stuff, you should have been hunting, 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 and now you have the ability to get yourself the leather tunic and the leather pants, which will double the amount of armor that you have. And you can also get yourself the leather helmet. So if you have the leather, go ahead and craft those guys up. Now go ahead and craft yourself a bow and some arrows because it is hunting time. Hunting with a bow is a little bit tricky. You're going to have to get used to it, but just aim above your target and you should be in good shape. You should be able to hit it off. Luckily, the bow does pretty decent damage, especially because it gives you the backstab damage uh, when you're hitting them unaware. So that first shot will typically be really good damage. At this point in time in the game, you should probably be focused on trying to get to the first boss. And the best way to do that is to focus on upgrading your stuff. We should be able to upgrade our bow at least three times. You're just going to need the raw materials in order to do that. Your leather, you're only going to be able to upgrade to leather two, but that's a significant upgrade. Uh, in order to go to leather three, you're going to need a workbench four. Exploring is a really big part of this game, so you're going to wind up spending a lot of time exploring your map and uh, trying to find out where everything is located. During your travels, you can find a bunch of abandoned buildings, which you can repurpose. And also, there are beehives, which you can collect bees from and be able to make a beehive for yourself that gives you honey. Be sure to check out all of these areas because sometimes there's chests that have gold and other useful items inside of them. As you start wandering around, you might start getting into an area called the Black Forest. Now, the Black Forest has gray dwarves and as this time, since you're a little bit puny, they might be significantly tougher than the graylings. Uh, just try to run and circle them off, uh, whittle down their numbers as best you can. Uh, try not to get surrounded by them and also, you know, just pay attention to your health. Inside of the Black Forest, you're not only going to find the Grey Dwarves, but you also might run across skeletons and even find yourself a troll. Be sure to use your map and mark items of interest on your map so that you know how to get back to them later. But also pay attention. Never take your eyes off in the Black Forest because there's always somebody here to beat you up. The best armor in the game for the Stone Age era is not leather armor. It is actually troll hide armor. And there is a troll up there off into the distance. Trolls are rather nasty, but they're pretty easy to defeat if you have a bow and arrow. Try to stay away from dwar or trolls because they do massive damage. But if you have a bow, just turn around and shoot them and whittle them down. Get rid of this gray dwarf here first. I don't want him to die in the water because I do want his stuff. So make sure you get him back on land before you kill him. And he's going to drop off several things. The most important of that is the troll hide so that you can make troll hide leather pants and leather gear. As soon as you're all decked out in your troll hide gear and you've leveled up your bow, Make sure that you have a bunch of arrows and take two of the deer heads that you've gathered along the way and it's time to summon the first boss.
Once you do, you'll wind up summoning the boss. And you want to fight him just like you fight a troll. You want to make sure that you're far enough away and just take shots at him with your arrow until you wind up whittling him down to nothing. Once you kill him off, you get a couple items from him. And the most important thing is not only his trophy, but his hard antlers. Now, once you kill him off, you want to take him back over to your starting area, which looks like this. And you want to add the trophy to the trophy area and then activate it. And now you get his power. And this ability will actually decrease the stamina usage for your jump and your run by 60%. As soon as you can, build yourself the antler pickaxe. And once you've done, then now you're able to mine on stone and you're actually able to gather ore. This pretty much completes your first level of the game. So you've made it through the Stone Age. Now the next thing you need to do is find yourself some copper and some tin and make bronze and start working through the Bronze Age. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'd love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.